Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash entitled people, where people truly believe that they deserve everything because they're special. And in today's episode, guys, what is more entitled than wanting family members to die to get their money? And Ovi tells a story about his super greedy family. Guys, your heads will be shaking so hard in this one. I hope you enjoy the stories. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And story submissions can be sent to this email right here. So here's a little backstory. I come from a highly dysfunctional family, and I tried to spend as much time away from them as possible. In third grade, I met a set of twins that would become lifelong friends, and their family is second to my own. At the head of their family was their grandfather. He was an extremely rough around the edges, no BS given or taken, my way or the highway kind of guy. Every one of us boys at the house was scared to death of him, and no one wanted to go out of town with him to work. When I was 21, I ended up helping him on a job outside of Fort Worth, and during this time we bonded. I called him Pop, and he called me Son. A couple of months after we start the Fort Worth job, Pop received a call that his aunt had passed away. We end up having a few drinks, and he told me stories about her until the rooster crowed. He described her to me in the same manner that us boys would describe him to others. Now, this woman would drink a fifth of bourbon, and she would smoke five cigars every day until the day she died. But she made it to nearly a hundred before she croaked. During the last 20 years or so of her life, the majority of her family had absolutely nothing to do with her, with the exception of one grandson, who I'll call George. She had also amassed a nice little fortune, having a hundred acre ranch, a large farmhouse, and a seven figure bank account. Pop decided that we should attend the funeral. The funeral was going as all funerals go, with people sobbing, others binge drinking, and most of the kids looking bored. As Pop and I are sitting quietly, minding our own, we hear this increasingly loud conversation behind us. Enter the cast, the entitled family, most likely the daughters. We hear behind us, daughter number one saying, Really? Everything? What do you mean he gets everything? Daughter number two, George's mom said, That's what the lawyer said. Daughter three says, She can't do this to us, can she? We're her kids. That's when daughter number four says, There's got to be something we can do about this. It's his fault she died. If he hadn't given her all that whiskey and cigars all those years, she would still be alive. He's in on this. We then hear, don't worry, George is my son and he'll do whatever I say. I'll make him hand over what he gets and we'll sell everything and split it evenly, just between the four of us. It was at this point, Pops caught on to what was being discussed, and I'm sure everyone else around had. And he, being a man to not hold his tongue, absolutely lost it. It went something like this, Pops spoke up and said, Y'all need to shut y'all's asses. This woman lived to be nearly a hundred years old, and you're gonna try to say that her own grandson killed her? Over what? Money? If you cared so much about her, where were y'all the last 20 years of her life? He didn't do it for the money, he did it because it was his grandma, and it was the right thing to do. Before the daughters could regain their composure, the son came up. He then looked his mom in the eye and said, Goodbye mom, this is the last time any of y'all will see me again. And then simply walked out the door. The last I heard about any of this, he was enjoying his life out on the ranch, and he refused to have any contact with his immediate family. I spent another six months traveling with Pops, working construction, and learning masonry. He passed about seven to eight years back, and I miss that man. Even if no one reads this, or cares, it felt really nice to talk about Pop. Guys, Pop does sound like an absolutely amazing man, and I'm glad to hear that OP got to be so close to him. With that said, it never ceases to amaze me how family members will ghost for decades and just come crawling back expecting a giant inheritance when a family member passes. I'm glad the daughters got absolutely nothing because clearly they only saw mom as a way to get rich quick. Like the way they were all talking at the funeral was disgusting. And I love how even the son was sick of his mom's BS and just ran far, far away from her when he got the chance. I guess it turned out he won't do what she says just because she's mom. Love it. So two years ago, I got married to a wonderful and intelligent woman. She's a surgeon. Her father is a very successful artist. He's done well, and he earns a great deal of money. In addition to my wife, the oldest, he has three sons, Larry, Moe, and Curly, and a daughter. Sister-in-law's the youngest. 
My father-in-law Phil is in his mid-60s and he's still going strong. He enjoys his work and he doesn't want to stop for another 5-6 to six years. He's got enough put away that he could live comfortably the rest of his life. My sister-in-law is the youngest at 22 and in university and she's a pre-law student. Her father pays for everything, tuition, books, an apartment, car, fuel, a food allowance, etc. The two of them also fight constantly as Phil's divorced from sister-in-law's mom. Well, sister-in-law was already upset because Phil took her credit card away after she tried to buy a last-minute business class seat home from Greece, which is another entitled story. Even though it's been four years since they divorced, she hasn't quite accepted that her father's okay to see other women, and she's very catty about them. Phil has an older brother, Jeff, and Jeff's finally decided at the age of 67 to settle down and tie the knot. They're having the ceremony in Norway, where their family heritage dates back to. But here's the thing. When Phil announced that he was going to fly out to his brother's wedding, sister-in-law absolutely lost it. She started yelling that he was spending her inheritance and it was wrong. How dare he spend his own money? She just launched into this huge tirade how he's always going places. He went to Canada, New York, etc. And then she tried to convince her three brothers and my wife to back her up and that he needs to not go to save her inheritance. Like she actually, I kid you not, said to him, you're spending my money. She then threw a small tantrum when nobody would back her. My wife had to take her into the other room and sternly explain that the money belonged to Phil and none of them had any right to it. She seemed to calm down and she came up with a compromise. She said she'd be okay with it if he would take her too, and then they'd spend a couple of weeks in Norway on vacation. Well, this started an even bigger argument, as one brother, Curly, thought it was a great idea, and he could go too. So Larry, Mo, and my wife tried to point out that due to the church size and remoteness, only Phil was invited. Everything ended when sister-in-law drove off crying because we were being mean to her, and her dad was going to make her poor. And if you're wondering what I did during this escapade, I stayed my happy self in the kitchen next door, preparing dinner, where I could just listen but not be in the line of fire. Oh man, is that ever super entitled, guys. And the audacity of sister-in-law to say that dad's spending all of her money. Like, imagine working so hard your whole life, only to have your own daughter say that it's all her. Her money. What a selfish, spoiled brat, and I hope dad spends the rest of his years enjoying every cent. With that said though guys, I do believe that dad had a lot to do with how entitled sister is. Like, I get that you want your kids to have everything, the easy life that you wish you had growing up, but this is the result. That man pays for everything for her, so why would she not expect that money to be hers? Like, it just makes me sad, guys, that she's basically counting down the days to his death and she's probably annoyed at every day that he continues to live and spend his own hard-earned money. My goodness. And if you think that was wild, listen to this post, guys. I'm a 47-year-old male and I was recently diagnosed with cancer six months ago. Now, I don't know what happened, but I went to get a second opinion, and I found out I was misdiagnosed. It wasn't malignant as the initial diagnosis, and I'm gonna be okay. Anyways, I'm recovering. When I told my family the news, it felt like my mom, who's 73, and my sister, who's 35, weren't all too glad about me recovering. Now you'd think that when someone's diagnosed with cancer and expected to die, and then they're told they're not dying, the family would be ecstatic, right? Well, that's what I thought. I didn't make a fuss, but I told my girlfriend, 38, about my observation. She told me not to worry, and that they were probably still in shock and relieved that I'm not dying. With that said, we were invited to my mom's house last Sunday, and that's when my nephew, 12 years old, just blurted out something about him thinking he was gonna be rich soon because I was sick and dying. Hearing that, it felt like a gut punch. I'm child free, so I don't really know when people start being a-holes. But I felt like he's still too young for that, so the next explanation is, he heard the adults around him. I just laughed and looked at my family, and they pretended that they didn't hear any of that. Only my girlfriend watched me in horror. I then asked my nephew why he would think he would get rich when I have my girlfriend. He was confused. I saw my sister turn around at that announcement. My girlfriend spent the rest of the evening holding my hand and caressing it. My mom called me the day after, and she was dancing around the subject trying to find out more. 
I never discussed my will with anyone, but what were they expecting? I've been with my girlfriend for 13 years. She's the love of my life and my family. With that said, I'm changing my will to exclude my nephews who I thought I would leave some for. It's going to charity instead because I don't want anyone who thinks they'll be getting my money to get my money. Update. So the message is loud and clear and I'm taking all of your comments to heart. I will marry my girlfriend. In my defense, neither of us have ever thought about it. We are happy, and we've always seen each other as each other's family. I just proposed without a ring one night. I just blurted out, will you marry me? And she said yes, and I'm in heaven. I don't have any social media, but my girlfriend does, and she shared on Facebook that we're engaged. Well, my mom calls me two hours later to ask if it's a joke. She asked, why now? Why would you decide on a whim to propose now when you've been together for over 10 years? And hearing her ask that, I didn't hold back. I told her that for the past 10 years or so, I've been treated as a cash cow for my sister and her family always expected to pay, and only the most expensive things. I then told my mom that my sister even insinuated that her oldest son, 14 years old, is expecting a brand new Porsche when he turns 18. And instead of acknowledging my generosity, they were disappointed I'm not dying. My mom started crying at this, swearing that it's all in my head and the cancer treatment's making me crazy and thinking these absurd thoughts. My mom told me they're all grateful and happy, that I'm fine. But I shouldn't forget that they're my real family, because we're blood. She also told me that my girlfriend's still young, and she could move on with her life should the worst happen. And if I leave my money to her after we're married, she's gonna end up finding a better man to spend my money on when I die. She then told me to take a walk and to think long and hard about my decision, and that regardless of what happens, they'll always be my family my real family. Mom also said that my girlfriend has a career of her own, and she's childless, so she doesn't need any of my money. I just told my mom, well, my girlfriend's always been my family, and now she's becoming my family on paper too. Hearing me say that, she starts crying, and she asked me if I'm planning to disinherit the boys now because of a stupid comment made by a child. And if I did disinherit them, would that also mean I'm disinheriting my girlfriend's niece too? At that, I told her she should wait for me to die to find out, shouldn't she? She then said there's no point talking to me when I'm like this. She then begged me not to do anything stupid, and she wished me a good night. There was no congratulations on my engagement, nothing. Now what's left is to find my girlfriend, now my fiancé, an engagement ring. She's very simple and minimalistic. She wants something small and simple, not extravagant. Her only request is that I choose it. She's surely a keeper. You know what, since OP's mom didn't say it, I'm gonna say it. Congratulations for your health and for your engagement to a wonderful woman. I've read dozens and dozens of posts like this, and greedy family members still shock me when they say the most entitled things ever. And what the mom said really cemented the fact that her and sister are way, way over their heads and super entitled. Like, how dare you marry the love of your life and leave the money to her? How dare you? You need to leave the money to your real family, your blood family. The ones that happen to expect Porsches when they turn 18 and just use you for expensive things. Guys, I absolutely love how the vultures just came out, expecting to pick at a delicious rotting carcass. And instead, they got a can of karmic whoop-ass. Instead. I just hope OP spoils his wife with his riches, because there's a saying, guys. The people that want everything often deserve nothing, but the people who want and expect nothing deserve the world. And guys, if you think that post was crazy, listen to this post. My dad is 75 years old, and he's a war vet. He's getting old, he doesn't have much time left, and he knows it. I enjoy quiet nights and reading to him or listening to our favorite music. Recently, he's called me and my younger sister, who just dropped out of college, to come over to have a serious talk. My sister is a spoiled rotten brat that owes a lot of money to her friends, and she's working job to job. My dad told us that he'll split the inheritance, house, cars, family heirlooms, etc. 50-50, and told us that we would both be able to take care of ourselves with it when he dies. Well, as soon as dad told us that, my sister's face lit up like a Christmas tree. She asked when we're able to get the inheritance, and I just looked at her like, really? My dad just brushed it off. He then laughed and said, when I kick the bucket, and there was an awkward moment of silence. Well, here's where it gets crazy. 
A couple of days later, I get a call from the police that told me that my dad slipped on his porch and that he's rushed to the hospital and he's there right now. Thankfully, he's okay. When I went to visit dad, I began asking how the situation even began. He said he lost his balance while slipping, nothing serious as it happens to everyone. That the porch just happened to be really icy this one day. Hearing that, I was confused. We didn't get any snowfall overnight or anything to make the porch icy. I was there yesterday and it was fine. I eventually made my way back home and I saw the gray camera on the pillars of his porch and I went on the app. I had a bad feeling so I had to check and that's when I witnessed the most shocking thing in my life. My throat just went tight as I saw my sister pouring water on the porch of my dad's house and left it to freeze overnight. My dad went to check the mail the next day and he slipped and slid down four steps. I cried for hours. I didn't know who to call or what to say to my dad. My friend eventually talked me into calling the police to show them this video and my sister's currently facing attempted murder charges. After hours of silence, my dad approached me and we talked. He said he still loves my sister despite what happened and he can't do anything to hurt her. It's just sad knowing my sister did this over money to our own dad. So the post ends right there guys, but all I can say is there's a special place in hell for that sister. Like wanting someone to kick the bucket to get their money is one thing. But holy cow did sister ever cross the line by attempting to end her dad like that. Like how stupid can you be? And really, I understand the unconditional love for your children, but damn dad. After that, to say that he still loves her is, I don't know, something else. My aunt was one of the two kids my grandparents had. My mother was the polar opposite to my aunt. She worked from the age of 12 in my grandfather's shop and she never asked for anything and eventually managed to start her own business. My aunt, however, never held down a job until the age of 26 and she was constantly stealing from her parents and was constantly in trouble. Despite this, my aunt was spoiled by my grandmother and so were her kids. She had three kids from three different men and her first husband was not one of them, if you know what I mean. It didn't matter what my aunt or her kids did, my grandmother would always jump to their defense. She never had time for my mom and her kids unless it was to get something from us. The only reason my mom would visit her was because she loved my grandfather. My grandfather passed away in 2004 and a few months after, my nan decided to write up a new will. My mother and my aunt were both present for it when she signed it, so they knew what was in it. It made it so when she passed away, her home would be sold and the money split 25% each to my mom and aunt and the remaining 50% would go evenly to the grandkids. At the time, the home was worth more than 500,000 pounds, so it would be a nice little inheritance, but nothing life-changing. In 2010, my mom died after an accident, and she didn't have a current will in place. As she no longer had her business, and she was renting a house, she didn't have anything of much monetary value. The only thing she was concerned about was what would be done at her funeral should she pass away. But she told me everything she wanted, the music, the flowers, the coffin color, and even what people were to wear at the funeral. She wanted people wearing bright warm colors. So when she passed, my aunt and nan took over all the arrangements and tried to undo the things I told them. The songs were going to be songs they knew my mom didn't like, and the flowers were all the wrong colors, and they picked a hideous coffin. With the help of my siblings, we were able to change a few things back to what they were supposed to be, but the coffin couldn't be changed for some reason. Also, my nan refused to let people come dressed as clowns, so everybody had to wear black. It was frustrating. After the funeral, my nan had her will changed. My siblings and I were told by our aunt that she didn't have any involvement in the writing of the will, and our nan told us that she changed it so my mom's share would go to her kids instead. We thought it was all good. After mom passed away, Nan just stopped talking about my mom. At first, we thought it was because she was still recovering from losing her daughter, but even after five years after mom passed, she still wouldn't talk about her. Even if you brought up a story about mom, Nan would very obviously try to change the subject, usually about how hard my aunt and her kids had it. And if you went to talk to her about your own problems, she would somehow bring it back to my aunt. I had suffered a mental breakdown after mom's death, so you can imagine how much it hurt to hear, well your aunt has it so much worse. Well, in 2016, my nan passed away. She had written down what she wanted to be done for her funeral, and it was basically all the same things she picked out for my mom's funeral, even the music to be played. I don't know why she tried to have a dress rehearsal funeral using my mom as the stand-in, but it was obvious that's what she was trying to do. 
So after a couple of months, our siblings and I were waiting to hear about the will reading, and my aunt kept telling me, oh, it'll be another month before we can do the reading. I didn't mind, I wasn't fussed about the money to be honest. But my oldest brother was hoping to use the money to pay for a honeymoon for him and his then fiancé, and my younger brother was about to start university, so it would be a big help. Eventually, my dad bumped into the solicitor my grandmother used to deal with her will, and asked what was happening. So the solicitor let it slip that the will had already been read, and it left everything to my aunt. When my dad questioned this, the solicitor told him that my aunt had been present when the will was written, despite promising that she had nothing to do with it. When confronted, my aunt initially tried to deny it, but eventually admitted to lying to all of us. She then showed us the will, and it confirmed what we already knew. The house and all its contents were now hers. This included my granddad's war medals, as he fought in the Second World War. When I told her that he had promised them to me before he died, she said, Well, unless you have it in writing, you will have nothing in this house. Anyways, I gave them to Clive. Hearing her say that, my heart sank. Now Clive wasn't his real name, obviously. That was her eldest son. And he was the dictionary definition of a screw-up. The guy had been in and out of prison for stealing and dealing drugs, and I knew that moment the prick got his hands on my granddad's medals, they would have been sold off, and I was right. We looked into taking her to court over the will, but everybody we spoke to said that we probably wouldn't get anything out of it. She then immediately put the house up for sale at close to £750,000. She had pissed off way too many people in town, so she was going to sell the house and move closer to her daughter, who lives in a big city. An offer was made on the house, and she put down a deposit on a house near the big city. And I thought that was that. But here's where karma comes into play. So the people who wanted my nan's house had a survey done on the house to see if there was issues, and oh boy were there. It turns out that the land the house was built on was way too soft for the type of house it was, and it was sinking. It sunk about 2 centimeters in the 40 years my nan and granddad lived there, but the sinking was accelerating to 1 centimeter per year. That meant that within the next 3 years, the house would need some serious work, or be knocked down, and the new value of the house was 60,000 pounds. The buyers immediately pulled out, not even having put down a deposit. That meant that my aunt couldn't buy her new house, but still had to pay the deposit on it. And while this was happening, she let Clive move in with her into her house that she rented from the council. He wasn't allowed to live in any council houses because he trashed every single one he'd been given. Someone reported this and she was kicked out of her home. So she was forced to move into my nan's old home as she couldn't live anywhere else. So there she is, living in a crumbling house with her craphead son and her partner. And she was stuck there for two years. Every time I saw her, she would try to start talking to me, and I would just ignore her and walk off. One time, as I was walking away, she screamed, Your mother deserved to die, for having an R-word, like you. Every time I saw her after that, she looked more and more miserable. Eventually, she sold the house for something like £85,000, and she moved in with her daughter in the big city. I lost contact with her and her kids after this, and I thought karma had been issued, but oh boy, karma still wasn't done with her. I bumped into one of her former friends, and she told me what happened after she left town. So she moved into her daughter's home, but they only had a three-bedroom house and three kids. My aunt and her partner had to live in the smallest room in the house, while my aunt looked for a job and a home to rent. Even with £85,000, she couldn't afford a home anywhere. After about a month, my aunt's partner ran off after emptying their joint account. She was left stranded in her daughter's house, not contributing anything because all the money she makes goes into bingo. Eventually, my cousin and my aunt get into a screaming match, and that's when my aunt said something along the lines of, I should have aborted you, and she was immediately kicked out of her house. So again, there's my aunt, in a city where she knows nobody, with no money, no home, and the last bridge she had was a smoldering wreck. So last anyone's heard, she was living in a caravan in the roughest part of the city. And she can no longer work because she's suffering from arthritis and she can no longer move her hands. Now I know I shouldn't get joy out of something like this happening to another person, but it does bring me some peace as to what happened. Guys, all I can say is karma is a freaking bitch, guys. And that aunt deserved every bit of what happened. And honestly, I hate reading posts where families are torn apart by inheritances and money. Like, what a freaking shame. And the thing that upsets me most is that OP lost out on getting their granddad's war medals. But yeah, that's entitled families for you guys.
So I'm 17 years old, and I found out only a few weeks ago that my dad left me a lot of money in a trust. Like, it's a crazy amount that I didn't believe at first. But it's true. My parents were separated, but not legally divorced when my dad died. When my mom learned about the money, she told her husband, and suddenly, the money became a very touchy subject. I can't touch it until I'm 19 with the way my dad set it up. So I do have some time to deal with this, but my mom and her husband want me to share my money with my step-siblings, who are 14, 8, and 7. The money is enough where even if I pay for college and buy a house, I would have a lot of money left. The way the trust works is I was told it's also getting interest, which my dad had intentionally set up. My mom and her husband have struggled financially for years. They started dating when his youngest kid was one. His wife had died, and he was going through a legal battle with the mother of his oldest, and his oldest is in therapy for trauma caused by their mom. Also, his youngest was born with some medical issues and has a lot of doctor's appointments. Between everything, money was tight. We live paycheck to paycheck, and I work to make my own life a little more comfortable. But we had no college savings or anything before this. My mom and her husband drained their own bank account to keep a roof over our heads. This has all been brought up to me as a good reason why I should do this. My mom told me it was selfish for dad to put it all away, solely for my future, and that he should have been thinking about raising me as well. She told me that I might not call her husband dad or his kids my siblings, but we're a family, and that this family's been through so much together and we've struggled for so long, that it would be so good and generous for me to do this. I told her it's not like I can access the money now, She said no, but when I do, I should set up accounts for my three step-siblings so they have a better chance at college. And if not college, the chance to have a head start in life. Despite all their trying to talk me into it, I say no. I told them I wasn't going to share the money. My mom was so mad, but it was nothing compared to how mad her husband was. They told me to quit being selfish and start acting with compassion. So am I the a-hole in this situation? Yeah, in my opinion, OP is not the a-hole, guys. Like, if the money is willed to him, he can do whatever he pleases with it. But all I can say is if he decides to keep the money for himself, he should get the heck out of that house because they'll never let him live it down. And with all that money, the world's his oyster. He can do whatever he wants. And this person says, not the a-hole. So your mom's new husband is mad at you for not giving money to his children? This money came from your father. That was not their father. It was yours. This is whom your father wanted the money to go to. Explain to your mother that if they're going to punish you for doing exactly what your dead father wanted, they can go fly a kite. Mom should also ask her new husband to stay out of it, because he's not your father. And this person says, I'm 58 years old, and take it from me. Number one, you're not obligated to share the money. If I were in your position, I would not. Number two, your dad left it the way he did, so your mom couldn't spend it on others. It's not your job to finance her family. It was not selfish of your father to not make sure your mom and company are okay but it is selfish and greedy for your mom and husband to expect you to give them money. Giving them money is what your dad would not want. Number three, this is your legacy. It's everything your dad could give you to help you in life because he won't be there. Your dad's trying to give you now what he would have contributed during his life had he lived. Remember that. Number four, you're young. Life is expensive. Please talk to the lawyer and get help to stretch the money out as long as possible. Houses need roofs, plumbing, cars need maintenance, weddings if you choose are expensive, and healthcare if you get sick is expensive. And then there's retirement. Don't look at college and a house as the only big items. You have 70 to 75 years to live. And number five, also find out if you get all the money at once or it pays over time. If it pays over time, you might not be able to share it. Guys, let me know what you would do in this situation. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's another r slash entitled people episode. Where a Karen keeps sending her kids to OP's house to play because she says it's a public playground. It's such a wild story, so go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.